Hello folks, this is Sula once again. Welcome to another video for League of Legends. This time we're going to be looking at another one of the Season 4 support build paths. This time we're going to be looking at the Ability Power, or AP, support build path, which is builds out of the Spell Thief's Edge item. And so we're going to be looking at a case of Support Annie in this video, which I don't think I've done a video specifically on Support Annie, which has exploded in popularity ever since the Season 3 World Championships when Royal Club's support, uh, Tabe, played Support Annie. It's really, like I said, just taken, really just is everywhere now. You see Support Annie in game after game after game. So this will be both a chance to talk about the new build path out of the Spell, Thief's, Spell Thief's Edge item, and also a chance just to talk about Support Annie in general as a champion. So we'll pick up this game right here at the start. Let's go ahead and get the two sides set up here on the bottom part of the screen, and there we go. And we'll go ahead and watch this. This is a game that has quite a few professional players in it. This is another one of those high elo solo queue games, which is pretty much the only thing I'm able to do right now because League Replay still is non-functioning on my computer. So we have a number of, as I said, well-known professional players like Zion Spartan, who's playing Gangplank in this game, X Special, the support for Team Solo Mid, MIA from Complexity. Uh, MIA, it looks like MIA and Trooper are duo queuing in this game. Wings of Death is in this game, another professional player. So uh, a number of fairly big names, but what we'll do in this game is, like I said, we're going to look at Support Annie and, you know, try to see what Support Annie specifically does that makes her effective. Well, basically, what people in China figured out, were the ones who came up with this initially, was that Annie's passive whereby every four spell casts, the next spell will stun its target for 1.75 seconds, that this actually was a really useful support skill, and right there you see it being used. Uh, and that actually Annie, well, it, you know, was traditionally played as a mage in mid lane, but she actually had enough utility to be a really useful champion in that support role as well. So basically, the way people play support Annie, and we actually have some pretty good trades going on right here, and that Ignite's actually going to be cleansed by Graves, and then an Ignite goes down on Tarek, but he actually has Barrier in this game, so yeah, Trooper playing Tarek with Barrier, kind of unusual right there. Now MIA getting very low as well, he's going to be flashed onto, but he is not quite going to die. This is actually a reversal of the traditional roles. Lucian with Ignite, Tarek with Barrier, kind of weird right there. Honestly, I do think the opposite would be better, but in this case it works out because Tarek survives the early all-in from Annie Graves. Now this lane actually does have a lot of synergy. Annie Graves is a burst lane. The idea is to burst down and kill the opposing laners, specifically at level 6 when Annie and Graves get their ultimate. It's, a, it's actually a very, very strong lane and it, it works quite well together because you have, well, tons of burst damage, if that makes sense. All right. Let me go through, I'll highlight first the Annie skills, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the itemization here in Season 4. Again, Annie support works off of her passive, so I'll highlight it once again. Every four spell casts, the next offensive spell will stun the target for 1.75 seconds. And that's a pretty lengthy stun. 1.75 is on the higher end in this game. You actually don't have too many that are... Uh, close to two seconds, so this is this is pretty darn good. Uh, what makes it especially good is if you can get the stun with her W, her incinerate. This is actually an area of effect stun, so technically, every you know roughly 15 seconds you can get off an AOE stun. Uh, so like right here, X Special is going to use the stun right there. Got the double stun on both Trooper and MIA, and now retreated back and is poking in the background. There is a Jarvan gank coming in, and that's going to be an easy first blood as the jungle Jarvan is there as well. So again, the incinerate, the W stun is used to set up that whole sequence and was what made that play happen right there. There's the stun once again going out on the Lucian and now he's going to be forced away. He's not going to be able to trade in this 1v2. Okay, so support Annie typically levels this first incinerate. This is a, it's, it's an AOE. Oh, right there is the flash stun right there. And now Gray's going to buckshot and that's going to pick up the kill. It looked as though Lucian was baiting a Ramus gank, but it just didn't happen. Flash plus W for the stun. Uh, immediately followed up by Gray's. Quick draws in, uses his buckshot, auto attacks, and that was enough to get the kill right there. So one reason why this lane tends to work pretty well. And now X Special is going to go back and presumably purchase. So let's highlight, well, let's presumably highlight we'll highlight the Spell Thief's Edge just because he's about to upgrade this. 10 ability power, mono regen, gold for 10, and then the passive basic attacks against enemy champs grant 4 gold. That can trigger once every 10 seconds. Now it's gotten upgraded to Frost Fang, which is the tier 2 version of this item. That's why I wanted to highlight the Spell Thief's Edge right there before it got upgraded. So similar idea, more ability power. 
now grants 20 ability power, more mana regen, more gold per 10. You start out with 2 gold per 10 on the Spell Thief's Edge, goes to 4 gold per 10 on the Frostfang, and still has that unique passive tribute. So spells and basic attacks grant 8 gold, can only trigger once every 10 seconds, and killing a minion disables it for 10 seconds. So basically, if you're using auto attack or spell harass, you get gold, Pass, you get more passive gold generation. So you'll actually see X Special auto attacking constantly to try to trigger this passive off of first the Spell, Thief, Spell Thief's Edge, only grants four gold on Spell Thief's Edge, but it grants eight gold on Frostfang. So this is the AP version of a gold generating item. And uh, it's actually not that bad. It actually has the potential to generate the most gold. See right there, there's that eight gold. And it actually works pretty well on Annie because of her ridiculous auto attack range. There is the AoE stun again coming out from her W. And note how Graves and Annie easily win that trade. Uh, yeah, so one of the things about Annie is she has ridiculous auto attack range. 625 auto attack range makes it very easy to get that, what is it, that Frostfang pass. If you like right there, tosses out an auto attack on Tarek, and there's a free 8 gold. So you have the potential to get a lot of gold out of this. Meanwhile, though, in comes Aramis gank, and X Special does not have flash up. He's already used it, so he's pretty thoroughly screwed. Did get off another stun before he died right there, and that's going to allow Graves to survive this because... Everybody on the red team is low. But one of the weaknesses of Annie is, of course, she does not have any escapes. She is not Janna. She is not Lulu. And, uh, well, we'll keep the focus back here because Jarvan is looking to gank. Right there, Ram is going to flash taunt. But the problem is Jarvan is here as well. Instant cleanse coming out from So Young, the uh, Grace player. Ward dropped in the brush for Vision. And Ramus is in a lot of trouble. He needs that Powerball to come off of cooldown. There it is. And is he going to be able to Powerball out of this one? Well, actually, yes. Actually, yes. So manages to make it out. However, Ramus's flash is down at the cost of Graves' cleanse. That's probably a victory. Uh, probably victory in favor of the blue team there, just because, well, just because having Ramus's flash up is a pretty big deal. Okay, let's look back at Annie once again. I mentioned that her auto attack range is one of the highest in the game. She actually has almost as much auto attack range as Caitlyn. Caitlyn is 650, Annie is 625. So it makes it easy to get those Frostfang uh, auto attack procs. And of course it also tributes off of, sp also get the gold off of spells as well. As you see the blue team going in and doing a nice blue buff invade right now. I mentioned that the W, the incinerate, is sort of support Annie's bread and butter skill. This is a short cone that flies out in front of Annie. Does not have great range, but it is area of effect, so it can hit more than one enemy. And you typically will see support Annie players relying on this because it allows them to hit more than one person at a time with their stun. Now, it's not the only way to trigger the stun. You can also trigger the stun with Q with Disintegrate. This is a point and click spell. Deals magic damage to the target. Mana cost is refund if Disintegrate kills the target. This is typically a skill that gets maxed early on laning Annie or mid Annie, but is not that good on support Annie because it's only single targets. Uh, that, now that said, the range is greater on Disintegrate. So if somebody's running away, it looks like they're going to get away and it's a single target. You can sometimes hit them with Disintegrate when Incinerate is out of range. Then her E-Spell, Molten Shield, increases armor and magic resist by 20 for 5 seconds. Also returns damage to enemies who attack Annie with basic attacks. That's relatively minor, not that useful. Uh, this is typically not really all that useful on support Annie. It's more used to cycle through to get her passive up more often. Uh, basically, you trigger this, it goes through her spell cycle, and you can get the Pyromania stun up more often. That's generally the main way this is used. But if you can see you're about to get attacked, then obviously it's still useful to get the, uh, the bonus armor and MR. Now, watch the little experience bar down here. See how Annie is getting close to level 6? X Special is getting ready to skill Tibbers and immediately use it when he hits level 6. This is uh, what you can try to do. Note that Graves is also already level 6. You can tell your laning partner, hey, I'm about to hit 6. Let's go all in as soon as I hit 6 and drop a big fat Tibber stun right on top of the other two sides. So really, uh, Annie's only maybe two or three creeps away right now. There it is. Hits level six. Now has Tibbers ranked up. Does Annie have flash up? Well, nope, but just going to go ahead and drop the Tibber stun right there. Out comes the Grave Alt, and you notice Tarek just absolutely melted right there. Ramus was there. Didn't matter. Uh, just killed Tarek instantly, and that stun is just about ready to go. There it is. Again, gets a double stun with the W, and now going to go after Ramus, and watch. We'll slow this down right here. Flash uses the Ignite. One auto attack. And, oh, Ramus, 
that's what happens when Annie takes Ignite. So a beautiful, beautifully played right there. Got two AoE stuns off. The initial Tibber stun that allowed the burst on Tarek that just killed Trooper immediately. And then cycled through spells uh, again. Got off uh, a Q. Got off uh, another Molten Shield. Got off a second Incinerate stun right underneath the tower that locked up both Ramus and uh, Lucian. And then finally flashed once again. Flashed. Ignited. One final auto attack was just barely enough to take down Ramus. And that was very, very nicely played. So a 3 for 0 in the bottom lane. And that actually has snowballed this game very heavily in favor of the blue team. Now they actually are winning in top lane as well. If you check out the gold total right now, Zion Spartan is ahead by about 700 gold. And it's pretty even in mid, but they're ahead in jungle. And most of the advantage in the game is coming from this bottom lane. Uh, almost 2,000 gold ahead in the AD matchup. And then well over 1,000 gold ahead in the support matchup as well. So what does a support Annie do with all that gold? Well, Expecial's chosen to pick up a needlessly large rod. So yes, this is not this is not your Sona support here or your Soraka support. This is just going straight for more AP. And look at the range on that auto attack. Ridiculous. Gets another eight gold from the Frostfang right there. So yeah, uh, this is the new, this is kind of the new style on the mage supports in season three. Just going straight for AP. You know, not uh, you probably should build a sight stone, but beyond that, just build AP. And right there, you're going to see another Morgana stun landing. Now, why have Graves and Annie rotated to mid? Well, right now, Lucian and Tarek are freezing bottom lane deep in their own territory. Uh, you can certainly do that. That means that they'll get a chance to pick up farm. But that means that the mid tower is very, very exposed. And it also means that the red team doesn't have any presence around Dragon. So blue team's going to go ahead and do this. Uh, you used to see freezing a lot more often. You, you don't really see it too much anymore because teams have gotten much better at knowing what to do to counter a freeze, which is go take another objective like take dragon have four people in mid and shove middle tower so you don't you don't typically see people freezing mid freezing a lane as much as they used to and with that dragon pickup obviously blue team gets even further ahead uh in this particular matchup so now they've got three man mid and they're going to well as long as as long as team complexity continues to freeze bot they're going to take advantage of that to push mid and get more global objectives in the form of this middle lane tower. Uh, Gragas has good wave clear, but it's going to be very tough for Gragas to try and defend this tower one versus three. So right there, actually, he's going to get a Tibber stun dropped on him from X Special. That followed up with a Morgana binding. Graves is going to use his ultimate, and that's going to finish off that kill very easily. And now this tower's about to go down, so the fight might continue here as well. Tarek and... Um, Ram is realizing that they're in a lot of trouble. There comes the barrier once again, that the not expecting barrier to come out on a support, but right there, another stun comes out from X Special using his disintegrate er, incinerate. I always get these two confused. Using his W incinerate stun once again, locks up Ramus and picks off another kill here in the mid lane. So actually 215 on the game right now. And Graves goes to 403 in really, really good shape. Uh, Tibbers finally will fall, but clearly the support Annie, you can see how effective it can be. Just that stun is is amazing. If people watched IEM Cologne, uh, I don't know if people watched that, but that was about uh, two weeks ago as I record this video. At IEM Cologne, uh, Gambit Gaming's Edward was playing Ant support Annie in like every game, and it was just destroying the teams that they were up against, both Fnatic and Cloud9 really, really got destroyed by support Annie. So X Special's gone back to buy. Note that he is not upgrading the Frostfang, and this is generally what people do because the, the upgraded version of Frostfang, which is the Shard of True Ice replacement or something like that, it's not very good. Uh, you get most of the value just by getting the Frostfang, so there isn't really a great need to upgrade this item. You can you can just keep it at Frostfang and you get most of the, the benefit. Uh, you don't really get much from upgrading it. Just, you basically just get more ability power, but that's pretty much it. So, you know, just leave it at Frostfang. Don't upgrade it. This is in contrast to the Ancient Coin build path, where the fully upgraded Ancient Coin, which becomes Shirelia's Reverie, or Talisman of Ascension it's called now, uh, that's really, really good. So if you go the Ancient Coin build path, you want to upgrade that ASAP. But if you go the Frostfang or Spell Thief's Edge build path, just leave it at the Frostfang. You don't really need to upgrade it. So let's do the comparison here. How much gold has Frostfang resulted in? Looks like it's roughly 450 at this point in time. How much has Tarek gotten from his Relic Shield? Oh, actually, no, he went Nomad's Medallion. Interesting. Well, he's gotten a lot less from the Nomad's Medallion. Anyway, in comes another Annie Gank, and Jace is going to get absolutely exploded in top lane with another Tibber stun. Uh, yeah, let me go back to that, that point again. So, so Tarek actually went the Nomad's Medallion ancient coin path this game, which typically you don't see. Typically Tarek's go the Relic Shield, uh, Targon's Brace path. 
He's gotten, what, about mm, a little over 350 right now. And X Specials Annie is clearly ahead of that. It's not even close. It's clearly has gotten way more gold. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can potentially get the most gold from the Spell Thief's Edge item. And Tibbers is still hanging out. By the way, Tibbers, Tibbers lasts for a pretty long time. I should probably highlight that skill since I didn't didn't highlight that. Yeah, so Annie's ultimate is Command Tibbers. Uh, well, summon her giant bear. Appears in a burst of magic damage. Right there, Graves is going to use his glitz. Get back this Graves is going to use his cleanse off of that Ramus Taunt. In comes the Gangplank ult from top lane. Wings is going to use Gragas Barrel to knock people back. And right there, we're going to see Tarek go down. Almost to an Annie auto attack but actually got finished off by the Graves Smoke Cloud, of all things. And that's another win for the blue team. And Zion Spartan actually dueled just Jace in top lane and won in the 1v1 matchup. But down in bottom lane, MIA is going ahead and pushing the tower. Uh, by the way, this, this may have just been a failure to trade. For those who don't know, MIA is actually the support on Complexity, not the AD player. And the fact that they have backward summoners means they probably like forgot to trade or something like that. Because typically, Trooper is the AD, and MIA is the support. Uh, and based on their summoners, it looks like they just maybe forgot to trade on the on the loading screen or something. Just kind of amusing. But uh, in any case, clearly not not really working out for them in this game. And blue team is at 13 to 2 and has a 10,000 cold lead. So at this point, it's just really what they want to do and how they want to finish off the game from here. Uh, anyway, going back just to highlight this again, most people who play this game are probably familiar with Annie. But if you're new, if you're watching this video and you haven't seen Annie before... Her ultimate summons a giant bear. Tibbers appears in a burst of flame. When he is initially summoned, he deals magic damage to the target area. Uh, Tibbers has pretty good range, and there, it is an, an area of effect spell. So it's very useful to use Annie's Pyromania passive with Tibbers. Then Tibbers stays around. For the next 45 seconds, Tibbers chases down enemies and deals magic damage each second to nearby foes. Uh, Tibbers will also attack as well. Uh, you can command Tibbers either by using R or by using Alt pl plus clicking the mouse. Either one you can use. All right, so right here, we're going to see another Tibber stun. That one looked like it missed, but it actually did hit Wings of Death. Got the stun on Gragas right there. And, you know, you can see the Tibber's stun or any other stun just makes it very easy for Morgana to land her Dark Bindings. This is a combination that has pretty good synergy. Out comes the Culling Ultimate from Lucian, and uh, we're seeing Lucian continue to DPS. Is this going to be enough? Yes, we'll get that shutdown on Annie. Meanwhile, over here, Graves gets caught out as well, so that's a double kill for Red Team. A desperately needed double kill, and they got killing sprees on both of them, so that's going to give them some gold. However, the fight's still continuing. Over here, we've got Gangplank ult coming in. Zion Spartan is roomed down from top lane. And is Lucian going to be finished off? He's getting very low. Just one Gangplank parley should be enough to finish him off. There it is. Going to take him down. That's a one for one, as we see the Jarvan player falling as well. Now Morgana's into the fight, has popped her ultimate. There's the Zanya's Hourglass to go into stasis mode. That's going to be a double kill for Gangplank. And still continuing this fight, he's going to use his cleanse, remove uh, remove Scurvy to get out of the Ramus Taunt. And this fight just continues. It's a brawl that just is going on and on and on. But it looks like finally maybe the two sides are starting to back out. Uh, Graves is already on his way back having had a chance to buy. Ramus comes in, but I don't think he realized Graves was there, so Graves is going to pick up another kill, and that probably is finally going to be the end of this particular setup. Probably going to be the end of this one. Anyway, what is X Special picked up now? Well, he's got a, he's got a DFG. No, you know, no big deal. Just has picked up a Deathfire Grasp, so he can 100 to 0 people. Uh, you, you, you wouldn't see people buying this item in season, in uh, you know, in season three. But anyway, down we're going to see Gragas fall once again. DFG has not been used. Does X Special have his flash? Uh, no, but it's about to come off a cooldown. And right there, grabbing 16 more gold from proccing the passive on that Frostfang. Right here, let's see, are we going to hear that stun? There is the Tibber stun coming out once again. Hits three people. Now Tibbers is tanking the tower. He's going to fall. And not, no, no, actually, Tibbers is still alive. Thought he wasn't. But right there, going to get the kill on MIA's Lucian. So that's a one-for-one one trade. And DFG was, in fact, used at the tail end of that fight for more burst damage. Now, Ramus is going to get caught. And we increasingly, this is looking like an Aram game. As everybody just runs mid and continues to exchange kills. Uh, out comes the Gangplank ult from top lane. But that's not, or actually, not top lane, from mid lane. Not going to be enough to do much of anything. So, blue team is playing a bit sloppy. They're trading kills back and forth. When you're ahead, you generally don't really want to just trade kills. Uh, that said, they're far enough ahead that it probably doesn't really matter at this point. Probably doesn't particularly matter. 
Now, if you're curious as to what runes X Special is running, uh, as best I could tell, I'm not 100% certain, but as best I could tell, this was Hybrid Penetration Reds, Hybrid Penetration Reds, because he has both Armor and Magic Pen on this build. Uh, and it looks like he has both Armor and Magic Pen Masteries as well, because I see the 6% in both categories. Also appears to be running Armor Yellows, running Magic Resist Blues, and probably running AP Quints, but I'm not 100% certain, as best I can tell, that's what he's running. But the hybrid pen, hybrid pen marks so that you both have magic penetration as you'd expect, and then so your auto attacks deal more damage as well. Uh, actually does make a lot of sense. Anyway, up here, Zion Spartan is trying to 1v2, and uh, it's it's not working, basically. Uh, he's pretty fed his gangplank, but he's, he's not quite that strong. All right, over here, again, it's really just up to blue team as to how they want to try to finish this one off. They What they really should do is probably just group and push. Anyway, right there, look how much damage Ramus took uh, when he was not in defensive ball curl. And a simple Andy, co Andy combination took off about half his life because he actually only has 49 magic resist when he's not in defense, when he isn't running his defensive ball curl. That's always one thing to remember with Ramus. When he has his W, his defensive ball curl running, he's very tanky. When he doesn't, he's not. Anyway, right there, Trooper is going to try to flash out of that, but he gets finished off by an Annie W and Incinerate. Didn't even use the, has not used Tibbers, still has the stun up for a future fight. And Blue Team really should just group and look to team fight and look to get this game over. There is the Flash Tibber stun, followed by the immediate Graves ultimate. That is just going to explode Jace. He has no chance. Wings is then going to get finished off as well. Now that focus has switched to Ramus, he's going to get stunned once again. Now MIA desperately trying to make it out. Is he going to be able to make it out of this? I don't think so, no. Gets finished off by the Jarvan Q, by that what, Dragon Lance, Dragon Strike. And that's actually going to be an ace with the earlier kill on Tarek, so this should be uh, should be an inhib in middle lane for blue team. And this one's rapidly snowballing towards an end. And now Trooper are going to get binded by Morgana. He's going to pop the barrier right here. Is this going to be enough to get him out of this? Morgana ult comes out, and Annie is going to pick up the kill. By the way, this is a 6-3-13 Annie. And Annie actually has a pretty ridiculous amount of gold. Has 8,900 gold. Actually has more gold than Morgana, who's 4011 right now. So yes, support Annie out golding the mid laner right now. Uh, which is the sort of thing that can happen in, in Season 4. Uh, if anything, I think they may have overscaled the gold that supports get. Uh, the biggest thing is assists grant almost as much gold as kills now. So if you're getting a lot of assists, you get pretty ridiculous amounts of gold. And, you know, you, you can build a pretty ridiculous amount of ability power off of that. So, I mean, yeah, let's check. I mean, if you check out the gold, com I mean, compared to poor Tarek over here, who is, what, 4,000 gold behind in the support matchup, and it's similarly one-sided pretty much across the board because this is not a close game. It is almost a 15,000 gold lead right now, and we're really just waiting for Blue Team to, you know, get their act together, finish this one off. Okay, a couple things to note. Items that X Special has picked up. Did get a Sight Stone. Has not upgraded it to the Ruby Sight Stone, but does have a Sight Stone. And that's that's a smart decision. Really should still get a Sight Stone if you're playing support. Because you do want that extra ward coverage. Uh, has also changed his trinket. Has gone over to the red trinket, the greater lens. Uh, has swapped that over. This is what a lot of supports will do, is they start with the yellow trinket, the one that gives you a ward, and then sometime in the mid-game swap over to the lens, the one that allows you to remove vision. Uh, it actually makes a lot of sense to do it that way. You don't really need to be able to clear wards very early on. The vision is more important, but the ability to clear wards later is actually very, very important indeed. Anyway, we've got another team fight going on. This, this game has become sort of an RM game. Poor Trooper is going to fall once again. He's now 0-7. Graves is going to pick that up for his 11th kill of the match, and Red Team is just basically trying to run away as best they can right now. But this is a matchup where Blue Team does not have numbers. It's actually a 3 on 4 right now, which means it's not the worst engage to pick. Uh, right there, unfortunately, though, the Morgana Binding is going to land. Morg is going to flash in, presumably is waiting to use her ultimate. Out comes the Soul Shackles. Ramus is going to go down. But uh, the problem is there isn't really an objective for them to go after. Like, the only thing that's up right now are the double nexus towers, and those are very hard to break. Really should rotate to bottom lane and take this tower. That would be the smart play right now. But instead, they're going to stay in mid and continue to push it, even though this is kind of a dangerous position to go in. Uh, they're actually chasing after Tarek. Tarek's 07. You guys don't really need to kill him. He's going to get blown up. Out comes the Tibber Stun right there, and he just immediately killing Jace. Use the Deathfire Grasp and just completely blows up Jace immediately. Uh, <laughs> so support Annie just turning into mid AP Annie right now, and we've got a good duel going, good duel going on right there. But Zion Spartan is actually going to fall, and now Annie running through the towers. This is not going to end well, and well, you can see why I said they really needed to rotate to bottom lane, and 
pick up the towers there instead of trying to force this fight in mid. So it, blue team getting very sloppy again. This is a solo queue game. Getting a little bit silly here with them so far ahead. Um, and now, now it looks like they're belatedly retreating over to... Well, actually, no. Not actually, no. Decide not to go to bottom lane. Thought for a second they're going to. But no, they're just going to blow up Trooper yet again. Trooper not having a fun game. Goes to 9 on the game. But Jarvan's going to be killed in exchange. And as I said, this has become kind of a silly, sloppy game at this point. Alright, so let's actually run this at double speed as we wait for blue team to go back by, get their act together. It's not really in doubt as to who's going to win this one. So what should they do? Well, again, they, they really should have rotated the bottom lane and taken that tower. Alternately, they've got a pretty free Baron. The Inhib's respawning, That's so it actually gives the red team a chance to get back in it. Anyway, right here, we're going to see, we'll reduce the action back to normal speed once again and see what's going to happen. Zion is picking us fight with MIA over there. Well, over there, Expecial just blew up Tarek once again. And uh, this fight still getting chased. Lucian's not going to make it out of this one. Keep an eye on this. Just needs one more parley. And they're going to pick that one up. Meanwhile, Annie got yet another kill. So Annie has just soloed two members of the enemy team right now. Yes, yeah, support Annie is lurking in the brush, waiting for Gragas to presumably jump over here. Now flashes the brush for the stun, but gets ulted and ignited by Gragas. So that actually will be a one-for-one -one trade. Probably could have avoided dying there. Maybe need to, didn't need to be quite that aggressive. But uh, that is 9-5-16 now for the support Annie. And one other thing I'll mention here is look at the, check out the boots that Egg Special picked up. Distortion boots. Uh, reduces the cooldown on Flash, which is really crucial for Annie. Annie's heavily dependent on using Flash to initiate uh, with either Tibbers or with uh, or with her W, her incinerate stun. So really does need flash to come off cooldown. If you want to play support Annie, you better practice your flash Tibber stuns because that's really important to playing her. Anyway, the, the battle continues. It's just so much team fighting. It's almost silly at this point. This inhib is getting low, but blue team not really in a position to finish this off. Again, they're still really, really far ahead as you see red team just melting as blue team turns and fights. Down goes the front line, Gragas and Ramus both falling. And now they really probably should just get out of here. But this game is going on much longer than it really needs to because Blue Team's been so sloppy. They've just been basically playing an arm in mid. Everybody running mid and simply refusing to leave the lane up. Trooper, well, you're you're probably going to die here again. Pops the ultimate, but it's not going to matter. And Morgana's going to get that kill. Jarvan uh, gets the Morgana Black Shield, but it's not enough. Still falls. The culling deals physical damage, not magic damage. So it's not going to do... Not going to be enough to block that. And are they finally going to turn and back out of here? Maybe, maybe not. Actually, Annie is here trying to bait people into uh, chasing. Jace is going to get locked up by another Tibber stun. That's going to be yet another kill. DFG coming out. Uh, X specials Annie using Deathfire Grasp. And again, the fighting just goes on and on and on. This is very much a solo queue game. You wouldn't really see this in a tournament setting or in an LCS game. But down goes Ramus. And Lucian's very low, but he's going to get healed in the fountain. And it looks like the Nexus turrets are finally starting to go down as well. But people will keep reviving because they're so close to the fountain. And blue team might finally have to get out. Are they going to get baited by that Morgana binding? No, it doesn't look like it. So uh, not, not really too much to say here at the tail end. There's another AoE stun coming out. Air of Effect stun coming out from uh, X Special's Annie hitting two people right there. And again, that, that's on a pretty short cooldown. Note that she can cycle through all her spells in probably about 10 seconds, roughly. You can get through all of them in maybe 10 seconds or so and get off another stun. So she can get off multiple area of effect stuns in team fights. It's not just about the Tibbers. You can get off more than one. And when Annie gets 300 ability power, like she has right now, plus a blue buff, um, she's legitimately strong in her own right, not just as a crowd control bot, but legitimately strong in her own right. Anyway, blue team is go ahead. They're grabbing Baron. And really, at that point, they just need to group up and push, and the game's going to be over. If they had done what they should have done, which was to group up and push side lanes, the game would have been over much, much sooner. And that feeling when you drop a ward in the Baron pit and see that the Baron's already dead, that's never a fun moment. All right, so X Special is once again baiting another fight. They're going to make sure that there's no vision. And right here, Wings is going to face check, and he just gets absolutely exploded. Still, this is not a great fight for Blue Team because they don't have two members of their team here. This is actually only three members of their team. So they really don't have numbers here. And you can see Zion Spartan's Gangplank is going to fall. 
And X Special is now going to turn around, use his combo on Shooper. Is this going to be enough to get the kill? Tibbers trying to get off his damage, but Shooper's not going to fall. He is just barely going to survive. And now, who's going to win this duel? Jace is going to pick up that one. Of course, Morgana's here, and yeah, needed really needed to dodge that Dark Binding. And well, you can see how serious the game is right now. People in Diamond 1 are obviously in serious mode at all times. Yes, only, only the most serious of play here at the upper echelons in Diamond 1. They, they just, you know, they're just so serious and so try-hard in these games when they're playing these ones. Yes, on, only, only the best players here in Diamond 1. So, anyway, finally, finally kills Rams as they had their dance off. All right, anyway, so let's speed this up until this team manages to group up and actually look to push something. Alrighty, so turn it back to normal speed here as they continue to do what they should have done about 10 minutes ago, which was to start pushing side lanes. Right there, Jace is going to get binded. Will that be the signal to go in? Yes, it is. Going to get the black shield, and that's going to be a kill for Jarvan as this top tower looks to go down. Uh, Gangplank's on his way back. Annie's on his way back. Annie has now picked up a Rylize as well for more health and uh, the ability to slow as well as stun. But uh, anyway, so we're going to have another game, go another fight going on here. The Black Shield actually blocked the Rama's taunt on the Jarvan. And the Gangplank ult coming out. Gangplank running around doing Gangplank stuff. Uh, that's going to be two more kills picked up. Morgana goes to 920 on the game. As, is the only one who hasn't died on this team. The only one who's actually played a little bit more carefully. And you can see there's already a Nexus turret down. Second inhib is falling. This one is, well, by Lucian. <laughs> nice knowing you, MIA. Uh, so that's that looks like it is finally going to be it in this one. Wow, that crit. Oh, the Gangplank gets a crit. Graves uses his ultimate. Gragas just gets absolutely exploded. Poor wings. Uh, anyway, so this one obviously turned into a stomp as everybody now dives into the fountain to get the kill on Jace. And, well, like I said, a serious try-hard game to be sure here in this one. But nonetheless, even though this game was not close, it was a good example of uh, good example of Support Annie, which is why I picked this one. And it was also an example of somebody who, well, the game has ended without a result. Great. Uh, <laughs> as I said, this whole replay thing is a little bit, little bit wonky. But anyway, I wanted to show the support Annie. wanted to demonstrate the Frost Fang, what this item does. Look how much gold X-Special was able to pick up from the Frost Fang. Compare that to Chooper with his Nomad's Medallion, and clearly, clearly, much, much, much less. Now, granted, that's not a fair comparison because Annie's team was so far ahead throughout this game. But nonetheless, uh, the Frost Fang Spell Thief's Edge item does have the potential to give you the most gold just do the, if you're auto attack harassing a lot. In any case, once again, hope people enjoyed this game. Hope people enjoyed watching this. Until next time, have a great week. I'll see you guys again later. Take care.